G'day and welcome to City Skylines. We're back in Amity Bay, a modded Let's Play series on my channel. So back in the early stages of our build here, we came in with this super little industrial area when we had our first demand for jobs and I think it turned out really neat. I love this sort of old vanilla brick industrial asset at the front, like that was the first industrial factory that sprung up in Amity Bay. Then as we step back further and further, more modern industry moved into the area. So we recently had a bunch of superb new CCPs released for the game, and among one of the best ones was the Industrial Evolution Pack by community asset powerhouse Avanya. I mean this whole series and build here is littered with Avanya's handiwork, so today I want to redo a part of this area, and we have a little more demand as well, so I think we can expand it. I think particularly this area here to the side. We used what we had at the time, but I think we can do better now. And you know what? I think it's okay to come in and demolish stuff as your city grows. I think sometimes we think that once an area is built, that's it. And I know I'm guilty of that myself, but it's simply not true. And not just when new content is released, I think it's definitely great to look at areas of your city and think, okay, that's not working as I intended, or my city is now much bigger, this needs upgrading, and go in and replan or demolish bits and pieces, it's okay to bulldoze. <laughs> so that's what we'll do today. I think most of this is actually okay, I'm happy with how it turned out, but let's expand and take out that side area as we do it, and have a bit of a rethink with these new assets. Okay, demolition hats on, safety first people, and while I build this out, let's fast forward.
Okay, let's take a look at what we've built here. So starting down the existing end here, we have the buildings that we'd originally put in and as I said, I really like how they turned out, so we'll keep those. Starting on the outer edge with these brick assets, then as we step back we start to transition into slightly more modern but still sort of older looking buildings. So following that approach, I've snuck in a few of the level 1 industrial evolution buildings, these gorgeous brick ones, they look so nice. And what I love about all of these new assets, they're very fusible as well. They don't look strange if you line them up next to one another to create a sort of custom building. They really lend themselves to that, which I just love. Infinite options. Then as we step further away, I've selected the level 2 buildings, but choosing carefully with bits of brick on them so it looks like this was the next natural extension to this area. Perhaps buildings were then made of corrugated iron or a mixture of steel roofs as more modern materials and building practices were invented. Then more level 2 buildings, again fusing clusters together to make it look like one larger warehouse or factory. Then over this side, same deal again, fusing them all together to make much larger warehouses. And this one here, I'm going to turn into a really big one when we come to detail it. A sort of large logistic setup here, which I think will look great. In with the level 3 buildings, again which are just superb. So these are modern buildings you'd see today. Solar panels on the roof, little offices bolted onto them with windows, which we have a lot of here in the UK. Maybe in an industrial park you'd see the small office block and then the warehouse out the back. And then these ones I've put together and they almost look like storage facilities that you can rent. You rent a container or a section of this to store your stuff in and that's the idea back here. I've also upgraded the water treatment plant. We had two small ones to begin with when we first built this area and at that point we didn't have anything else unlocked. So now we're a little further on, I've just popped in the advanced inland water treatment plant. We have our dedicated water treatment plant back behind us now so we don't need anything bigger than this here. But I did like the idea of this still sitting here, I think it adds some interest to this industrial area. I've then gone in and upgraded the roads. When this was first built out we had a gentle slope and plenty of tree coverage but now we've expanded I wanted to redo these roads and slip them down but keep them compact to maximise our build space. Over this end I've left some space as well. For now we'll pop some trees in there but this will be an ideal spot in the future to come back and put a unique factory. I think this area here is crying out for one so let's leave a space ready to do that. And that's it. So a few new assets in here now which I think look superb but just careful not to overdo it and end up with not enough worker warnings. It's a fine balance. So now it's time to bring it to life for some detailing. Let's do it.
Radio, let's see how the finished build turned out. Starting down this end, the water treatment plan, just a bit of secure fencing around the perimeter here, then picking up similar assets which used at the previous water treatment plan build and repeating these for consistency here. So the upright tanks, the little shed there, crates, barrels, containers, and then in with the decals. Then behind it is probably my favourite part of this build. We'd done something similar to this last time, so I wanted to recreate it, but I've taken it up a level. I've gone in with the yellow line decals here to mark out a sort of custom loading area, where the truck's back in, then the forklift is ready to go unloading. Plenty of containers, as this would be the Williams Group's main logistic warehouses in this area. So there would be a serious amount of trucks coming and going. Little diagonal yellow decal lines as though that's the safety barrier or area. And then I've repeated those at each little door too. Safety first! <laughs> then lots of rough concrete decals, forklifts, along here more trucks backing into the loading bays. Then I've moved the spawn points so the real game vehicles don't spawn right in the middle of the props. Then around behind us, the more modern assets. I didn't do too much to it in all honesty. A few props around these ones here, but the ones that look like storage units, I just left them as is. I think whatever is being stored would be contained securely inside, so not piled up at the back or anything like that. Then over to this area, same again, just warehouse type props to bring these assets alive and give them a sense of realism like they're being used on a daily basis and it's busy busy busy. I've run past through these ones as well just to get the sims walking through them which looks quite cool as well. You can tell where I've put them as there's a little lamppost dotted about but if I just switch out of this view, there we are. So there and there. Then back over this side, the same treatment, bits and pieces around, just making note of what the assets come with and building on that, or if there's nothing, just popping some relevant props in there. I made this little scene here with the little sims lifting some crates into the back of this little truck here, which I think is quite fun. Then back over here, I've left them largely untouched, just given the way the asset is made, I don't think they needed much. So a bit of fencing, plenty of greenery, and we are good. Some of these fences that are around the edge aren't necessarily for securing the premises, more just to stop people wandering through from the paths along the roads, so more for their safety really. Then I've left the road maintenance depot and a second taxi depot untouched as I think we can come back at a later stage and do something with the unique factory here. So I'm not sure these will be here permanently, so no point going to town if we're going to move them. Then the last thing I did is rename this area the Williams Industrial Complex. We started out with the old Williams factories up the front, then we've repeated that with some of these newer assets which have the same signage. So this can be their whole logistics complex here as part of our law. So I think it turned out really nice. These assets are an absolute dream to use, so if you haven't purchased the Industrial Evolution CCP by Vanya, I would highly recommend it. I've got a link below to Instant Gaming who have superb discounts on a whole range of games, including City Skylines and any of these packs, and that link supports my channel as well, which I'm super appreciative of. Let me know what you think of the build in the comments below as well. Before the Sinos, we have a couple of viewer suggestions which I just love. Keep them coming. The first one is from Man With That, who suggested that with our concrete wall, we should add some decals or graffiti, and I think that's a great idea. So let's sort that out. There we go, I think that looks superb. Thanks for that super suggestion, and I hope you like it.
Next up is Adam Yehend, and over in Clayton where we did our forestry build, maybe if we added in some tree stumps it would help elevate it, and that is also a brilliant idea. You definitely do see that with forestry plantations in real life, where they've come through and just left the stumps of freshly cut trees. So let's do that as well. There we go. How cool does that look now? Thanks again for that suggestion. I hope you like it. And if you have any suggestions, drop them in the comments below. I love getting your feedback and suggestions and evolving our city together or doing mini builds for you. So definitely keep those coming. Well, that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. If you're on Discord, jump over to my Discord community for a chill out and chat. And until next time, take care, have a great day, and thanks again for watching.